here in Ethiopia, the first case was uh, uh, identified almost three months back, and uh, still the course and the number of cases being identified uh, as a country is a bit low, unusual compared to the, the usual trend that we have been seeing in uh, other countries, particularly Western. So, uh, and uh, unusually also a number of patients are uh, being diagnosed after they are coming for other medical problems and uh, most diseases are uh, uh, after, some cases are uh, uh, tested after post-mortem. Uh, most of them found to be also uh, positive for uh, SARS-CoV-2. And this makes it a bit unusual uh, for the country. So there's so much variation in the numbers that we see and the case fatality rate numbers. There has been testing uh, strategies by the Nigeria Center for Disease and Prevention and Control. But unfortunately, the testing strategy has not been testing so much. So we as a group, we are thinking of doing what we call community surveillance. So we are not looking at people having the clinical symptoms, but rather we are thinking of asking volunteers, people with mild or no symptom, for them to be tested for the COVID-19. Procuring the swaps, issues with the VTM, uh, number of PPEs used, all that, uh, are affected and uh, are affect the testing capacity um, and maybe things like this need to be studied for making it easier and more cost effective while we have tb uh, sputum cups already present and i feel that's a great uh, tool already we have which we need to explore so there are these little little practical things that i wish um, there is research on if we talk about characterization of those diseases, we have to think of long-term storage of those samples and then be how we can subsequently be retrieving the samples and studying the characterization of those diseases with respect to time. So uh, thinking of a biobank in times like this is very critical. To develop robust frameworks for um, not just, um, you know, uh, uh, adequate ethical review of research, but also the implementation of these trials, you know, their management, their regulation, their operational setup, um, uh, and, you know, um, th because these are the areas that, um, that are usually, they act as barriers uh, for us whenever we try to um, even implement clinical trials for our routine, uh, you know, uh, diseases. Uh, so when faced with a pandemic, um, these deficiencies are, you know, they become even more gravely highlighted. The issue of uh, the lack of ethics sensitization amongst researchers and our very limited attempts at community engagement for therapeutic trials or any research for that matter. Uh, and I think it is this lack of community engagement that has led to a lot of misinformation um, uh, within the community, uh, which is now becoming a huge barrier to implementing anything uh, related to, uh, you know, control of this uh, pandemic. Uh, and I think this will also affect us once we um, have a vaccine. We need to enlighten the community about the health issue. Like, how do they use water to clean their hands? How do they get access to hand sanitizer? How do they use, encourage them to use the face mask? So with all this, if we can focus on the community, because people down, down in the community may not be aware of the COVID 19 and as you may do some sample study within the low income community you will you will may find some people are still not even aware of the covid 19 so our research priority should focus on the community baseline studies and also we need also 
to incorporate the use of digital health technologies that will give a quick response. What do you do when you are on the field and you have to collect data and people do not even believe that as a researcher you have anything to offer? And they feel that uh, this is more like um, something that's presently happening. I think it's worthwhile uh, to do qualitative research within the LMIC communities and also in many developed countries uh, because they do have those marginalized populations who are not following public health measures um, purely because of um, either misinformation or uh, hardcore economic reasons. Things like uh, this and washing uh, services, sanitizers, masks, social distancing, we need to come up with the uh, ways in which we can implement them uh, within the slums because this is well if we get an outbreak we're going to get lots of numbers that will, to an extent will not be able to to contain so we need to get uh, ways of putting these measures in those areas and also before even we have them in the area we need to do much of uh, sensitization because it basically goes back to community there. Does they accept whatever intervention that you're placing for them to use? Do they have trust? This mistrust, I think, has become uh, uh, the, you know, the core problem everywhere. We will not take uh, social sciences and behavioral research alongside the biomedical model of research as a matter of urgency, uh, we will not be able to benefit from the evidence that is emerging from biomedical research when that emerges. I think that um, uh, the bottom line is that funders should uh, fund studies uh, or maybe prioritize studies that are large scale collaborative uh, that incorporate social sciences and behavioral research and community engagement alongside testing biomedical interventions, including vaccines. One final point on the importance of generating leadership, uh, research leadership in LMICs, because without that, uh, the status of healthcare uh, access for LMICs would not change. Really go back to our sustainable development goals the impact putting in place, the public health measures that we are currently putting in place, the impact of them on um, countries meeting our SDGs that we had put forward in 2015. And this applies across the board for developing and developed countries where we were aiming to end poverty, to end hunger, to ensure quality education for gender equality. We are now moving back backwards with some of the measures that we have put in place, particularly with lockdown containment. So um, we are running the risk of moving backwards a decade or even more uh, when it comes to achieving the goals of our, our, our UN SDG goals. Lately, we had a lot of uh, decentralization of services. And I'll be interested to see how now in this current environment, things are working, both in terms of resource allocation uh, but also what is the, the approach that the government uh, is uh, using? How is this uh, impacting on other services apart from responding to COVID-19? What about other aspects of their service delivery? So there are a number of questions there that research-wise I think is very important. The COVID affect other aspects of service, especially the chronic disease, the elderly people, the elderly services, the psychiatric services. All these services are maybe affected by the COVID, so we need adaptation of the, our strategy and our response to, to not uh, mask the others, but to make a collaboration with others, how we can face our problem, other health problem in presence of the COVID. This is very important. The COVID-19 pandemic for Zimbabwe has actually uh, brought another layer of vulnerabilities for children women and, 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 and men. And uh, how we see it is we have been struggling with, uh, um, uh, you know, with capacitating the health system. I know we don't have uh, much of the capacity to respond uh, like the developed countries, 
and at the core of our interventions uh, we will uh, will uh, think much on uh, public health interventions and uh, so we we just need to come up with the uh, research questions that we are able to evaluate and quantify at the end of uh, the the implementations uh, or the process of the research and then we need to see how can we instill uh, public confidence uh, to trust that the the public health interventions that the various governments, organizations, and NGOs are doing are actually going to curb or reduce the rates of infections and even admission, hospitalizations, and, and so forth. Research, um, uh, especially biomedical research, uh, um, depends a lot on the, uh, on the context of the healthcare infrastructure of that region. Uh, and lower middle income countries already um, they they have uh, fractured healthcare infrastructure at best, uh, which is further taxed uh, uh, in a pandemic such as this one. Uh, and then there are certain social and economic realities of LMICs also. Um, you know, uh, most of the containment efforts that even the developed world is struggling with, uh, purely because of economic reasons. Um, are um, you know are of an even graver concern for us uh, because uh, indefinite lockdowns are certainly not an option for us. Um, uh, they are not for anyone else either, but um, they become even more difficult for LMIC countries. Mm -hmm.